This is BTWRLM341. For those of you on Aftercast, Pastcast, Postcast, whatever the cast is, wherever you find this broadcast, today or into the future, after it's going live. And thank you for all those of you that are syndicating the broadcast. I appreciate all that. UCY.TV, Jules, thank you. Over Sound Minds. As always, I think about it, Sound Minds, if you can change your link to Jefferson Mining District to remove all the WP stuff, just put JeffersonMiningDistrict.com. Folks, those of you that are listeners would know that's where you get a lot of information that I pull from. Not as I'm reading it, but as a resource. In fact, now all of our coordinators and all the assemblymen there at Jefferson Mining District go to the website because it's a tool, actually. And when you understand a little bit, if you start look, listening to what I say about land law and these kinds of principles and, and law in general, administrative or in the uh, le- judicial side, if you will, you'll be able to pick up a lot of stuff from there and, and run with that. Um, so, uh, yeah, sound minds, we were having a little bit of problem with the WP, so I just moved it on over. There's no sense in doing it in the link that you put up. I think you've been putting up is going to go to a redirection, which means that your old leaks, when they stop doing that, won't work. So, anyway, thank you very much for, for syndicating the broadcast that you do or rebroadcasting it later and doing all the video that you do there. I appreciate all that. Normalization of ignorance. Appreciate that. Grammy Mary, thank you for the speaker again. Everybody's contributing to get the broadcast out. And I was thinking about all this, always thinking about whether whether or not we're doing any good here behind the woodshed for people. All these libertine minds I see going through and discussing stuff, I'm surprised they're not flocking behind the woodshed. Literally, because we uh, everything I talk about is doing something. It seems like nobody really wants to do much. And I don't understand that. Why Why would you have a libertine mind and not respond against an oppression that's clear? Otherwise, what are you talking about? And I don't know of anybody else that's really providing the kind of information that you would need in any, I mean, just general subject matter issues, and that we, over time, prove out these processes work. Again, as I talked about the EOs last week, We're not going to benefit from those EOs. That's what we've been doing forever. It's what's been in the law to do. If you just read some black and white, you wouldn't be going down all the bunny trails, all the rabbit trails, or whatever you're going, what kind of trail, well, Alice in Wonderland stuff. You'd be going right to where the black and white says you need to go, and you'd have been right all these years, just like we have been. And so this is what I I see, and I see that's just a waste of time for those that do get involved. It's a waste of time to go down all these other things. People don't really do the background research to find out what they're being told a lot of times, as I see it, is incorrect or improper or misapplied or not relevant or irrelevant, impractical, impertinent, all the legal things, all the law things that you do for evidence. You should have those in your mind because if you do, or as much as everybody complains about them, they actually orient your thoughts on what's important. That someone's taken all that and absconded with that stuff from you in your rights that's a whole other other issue, and that's also on you, us, to have stopped. Remember? We were supposed to maintain our education about our own system. We were supposed to keep that republic. And, I, you know, when I think about this, my mind goes global, because if everybody had this in them, not just as an emotional sentiment, but a functional action, I really don't know that we'd be seeing the kinds of problems we have. It's certainly the whole world would be, well, I don't even know if it would be a Working to accountability, it would be bringing accountability, the the thing that's sorely needed at this point. And no, I haven't been able to bring the type of accountability that I would like to see that the law provides. No, I haven't done that, but we have brought at least accountability to the point that those that listen to me and move forward on their subject matter, I'm trying to think real quick before I say this, I don't think any of you have found doing that that you've run into too many problems. That certainly, if you do the problems or obstructions, you can get around them using these methods on, on how you approach a, an obstinate, tyrannical type of an authority. And it's just authoritarian. It's just someone's in their mind. It's a man or woman's mind who thinks they have the authority. And so, why I see, I just I don't know why it's all, all of a sudden just focused on this because my my tab says something else. But lots of libertine ideas will not flock behind a woodshed to get the information to begin the path uh, down the path of doing something. If for as long as I'm sitting here having to say that, the society is not going to fare well, folks. I don't know what else what to say. And I'll move now into the tab because 
this stuff is predictable. In this case, we're talking. I'm going to talk about the weather. Uh, I don't know. You know, there's just things you sense. There's just an intuitional sense you get. You know, you've been around for a while. You start noticing things, and it's not even maybe even definable. No different than I told you I had, years ago before Banda Aceh earthquake. I had a. I could tell you where the secondary earthquake was going to happen after the first, and I could tell you the magnitude within a few hundred miles. That worked up until Banda Aceh. Then the Earth changed. So I couldn't tell you how I did it. I just know that I did it. So we're moving into the weather here. I told you early in the spring, and I guess now people are saying that they did too, and that's fine. And it's, But I'm not here just to tell you about the weather. I'm here to tell you that there's things predictable that maybe appear unpredictable. It takes a different sense in you to kick, to move. And then we need to not just know this stuff. We need to think about responding if we need to. And this is the weather is one of them right now. This uh, just came up this uh, even, uh, yesterday evening when I was looking for stuff to talk about in context of what I bring up in my tabs. The historic Midwest blizzard has farmers expecting massive crop losses as devastating as we've ever seen. In fact, folks, it's a complete devastation. There's a complete loss of food in wherever in the Midwest, North Dakota, I think, and in the Midwest as well. Snow came in and covered over the crops that hadn't been harvested, and they don't know if they can get the ones they, that are in the ground, like taters. And so uh, what do we do with that? Well, this, I don't know how big this thing is going to be. I told you this was going to happen in spring. I said, and I told you the dynamic, and I think it was eight hawks over in UC-wide chat that just barely keeps plugging along. I think he mentioned, he, they were told wherever he's at, that it's a tropical something, I think his words were, that is bringing in a cold front, and it's going to get nasty. That's exactly the dynamic I told you was going to happen this year in spring. And so here it is, the Midwest blizzard is going to cover over your food. So I'm saying here, I'm not a weatherman. I didn't predict it necessarily. I mean, I didn't know it would actually do this, but here it is. And what are we going to do about it? If your food is being covered over, you better start thinking about prepping, whether that's in having the food or in preparing to pay for more. I don't know how wide this will be. I don't know the the global ability to cover up, cover over to the we don't get affected, but this is not going to stop. This is going to continue. I was telling you about the behind the Rockies, and I'm looking at now into the short future. I went real quick today. You can you can too. And go look at the infrared systems that are coming in from Asia, and you're going to see a pumping. There's a concentrated band of tropical air being pushed by a massive cold air pockets that are going to slam into the west coast of the, of the United States of America and Canada, and may or may not drop their, their, their payload there, but will likely drop it down into the behind the Rockies and into the in central United States. It's pumping, right? It's tropical cold, tropical cold. This is exactly the problem I told you. If you look right now, look over America, you're having a tropical thing come up, like I told you it was going to do, and it's meeting that cold, and that those fronts, the cold front that you're seeing is coming over people is going to dump all that wet that's in the, in the air from the tropical. And so this is not to know we're weathermen. This is to pay attention. Uh, we may have a serious problem with our food. I noticed over the last few months they keep giving news about food shortages and stockpiles. I don't know the truth of all that. I don't, have, don't look at it that close. Some of you have the time. Maybe you want to look at it. Let the rest of us know. But this is a time to look into the future now. And there's also a plan about this looked like it was going to start happening. They start starving people out. You will enjoy austerity, folks. I don't care how they do it. And I'm not talking controlling the weather. You can just take what happens naturally and capitalize, leverage the weather against yourself. You can almost see it at the time of the, the Dust Bowl. Well, I don't know if they were doing that kind of a weather modification then. They had the technology. It was earlier technology to do that. I don't think that was just a natural happening. Had there been a guy, someone who understood it, they could have anticipated the plan and then run people wherever they want to drive them, drive people to where they need them and how they need them. And so you see the evidence of the past tells us of what could be happening here and be prepared. We have enough information and we're integrated now enough with this uh, internet. Instead of all the stories we're telling each other, there's some real serious stuff coming down. We can buffer a lot of this if we were just to anticipate it. So. The exact dynamic I said, I was hoping it wasn't going to happen, but the exact dynamic I described in, in, in April is happening right now. I can't tell you how bad it's going to get because we don't know, but it'll pump. Right now, we're going to be pumping cold into the uh, snow-type weather into the Midwest here for another few weeks, it looks. And so if they can't get, here's the point about that. 
if they can't, if the snow stays on the ground, they can't get to the tube crop, the, um, the, the root crops, tube crop, the root crops to get out the more stapled foods. And so here we have another potent, potential. So again, we don't say try to be here to be predictive of, uh, oh, look at, look at it, me, I'm a prophet. No, this is, we're supposed to look into the future, uh, give indications of what's happened in the past, what the, what's writing today and what we're going to do in the future. Well, that's the point. What are we going to do? Today I'm saying prepare earnestly when we see the food being destroyed. Those of you that would get the food out of that area, and if it becomes a big enough area that the the receivers of that food or the lack of it are going to be felt wider and wider, look ahead, folks. This is just not a time to be looking away, especially any time working into winter as it is. So anyway, I just stop there. Prepare, folks. Just look at it ahead. Don't get not don't get nuts. Just understand. There's a dynamic out there, and we have to respond to it. Like I tell you, even in the, in your, with your rights and your, and your laws and all the things that you th- complain about, you don't have no more. This is all the same. To, it's all a natural type consequence if you look at it. And I talk about the amoeba, the parasitic amoeba, because of that. We don't. Man is not divorced from himself. Women either. And so these all are really. You're looking at nature, natural law. You got it. It's not a big deal in some regard. It's a real big deal to understand it, but it's not a real big deal in the fact that it's something different, like climate change does. It makes you different than your own environment. That's how they separate you from yourself. It's easy. that Now they've got you split personality. Oh, and, and, and different than Headless Annie we were talking about, I saw being, uh, we were talking about, I was seeing talked about in the chat last night, RLM chat. So, these are... There's a things to look at here, folks. It was predictable. Here it is. Another thing that's interesting. Here we go from one cold area to another, folks. I'm just asking you all to stay off my island, but that doesn't. No one's listening like they normally do. Antarctica is leaking radioactive gas for nuclear tests 60 years ago. I found this story just interesting because what it does it starts to set up the fact that the science and man don't know much, uh, and uh, you'll make com- you'll make statements about things, and again you see a lot of political imposition upon a lot of what's being said in the in the um, in the news so called the notice and it's really not the notice of what's going on it's really the notice they want you to think that you know in order to continue or get lost in or whatever so you can become in, ineffective or you're looking the wrong way you know you're you're just looking in the wrong direction now uh, you're flat footed but worse that uh, this is an interesting story about the chlorine 36 that they're blaming on atomic bomb responses. But if you look at the story, it's pretty interesting. And they haven't, I looked very carefully, they haven't changed a couple of errors. And uh, I think, in fact, I don't know if I heard uh, Grimner talking about this one, but it's not, the point for me is not really the story about the uh, chlorine 60 coming from atomic bombs that has now been tested in Ar- Antarctica. The point is, when you look through the story, they tell you that there's natural sources, but the, the scientists are saying that it can't be big enough. The, the, these natural sources don't produce enough, even though they tell you that this stuff is trapped in, in ice. And so if, even if it's not a big enough source, it is trapped long enough, it's building up and concentrating. I guess at some point you can measure it. But the question I think is valid is well, why is it only concentrated in those couple spots? Then they did an interesting thing. They say they talk about it being measured since 1910. Well, you go back to 1910, there wasn't uh, any nuclear reactions, folks. There just wasn't happening unless uh, there was some secret, secret scientists working somewhere. So they got the whole story fall starts to fall apart about the science behind all this, the measurement, and we disregard because if someone says so that it can't come from natural sources. I don't know what the story is, but I can tell you: you go around the country, the United States of America, and you're going to find problems with radon gas. Now, why would, couldn't, in all the stuff we don't know, why couldn't there be a source that is either over, either over time concentrated chlorine, uh, chlorine 36 from the natural sources they admit exist, or there might be a different type of source we've never seen before, like all this other stuff we haven't seen before? I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. The, the inner space of the world, of the earth is more, more, it's still not known as much as the outer space, interestingly. Still, it's been a thing all my life. Partly why I wanted to go into oceanography. I said, let's go to inner space. That's kind of neat. Neat stuff. At any rate, Antarctica, le- uh, Antarctica is leaking uh, leaking radioactive gas. Kind of told me, yeah, it's leaking. It's not coming from the atmosphere. 
didn't they say it's not around the world that that's why you got to look at natural sources and then they find this these two sources no it could be elsewhere it's not the point the point is that we buy into the so-called science and it really looks more like it has its political nature and I don't know what more to say than that you take these notices of the problems not as for the facts they give you and you try to lower down the hype they're just not a not enough there anyway and they say it's not in the atmosphere so okay so it's too bad so sad for the Antarctic maybe move away from there for a while I would move away from just get off my island let it let us be how's that but no we're not that way and so I just I just looked at this science came up the failure of science has been in the news it's, it's a running theme all the time so certainly on the broadcast behind the woodshed here but uh, we just don't know and it's always refreshing when they admit to it. And then I always say, if they admit they don't know, why are we continue listening in that? And why don't we turn our attention to studying more or becoming more real about what's going on? Real Liberty Media, right? More real. Why don't we work toward that instead of just talking about it or complain about how we're not so be in such liberties? And I can go either way. The liberty is bad or liberty is good, depending on the context. You're either a sailor on a ship or you have uh, things that society bestowed to you that you couldn't get any other way. And so those are two types of liberty. But uh, let's get back to the scientists and how it's refreshing that if they finally say they don't know. And if they don't know about this kind of stuff, if they say they don't know, then why do we continue listening? It's interesting information, but what do we do with it? And then my first comment to myself is, okay, what is it going to do that I have? How does it affect me? If it doesn't affect me directly, and it doesn't affect something that may kind of get close to me or that I can do anything about, I put that on the back burner at least, and it just becomes one of those pieces of information. Unprecedented movement detected on California earthquake fault capable of an 8.0 Tembler is another theme going on in a, in the story about how, you, you know, I've heard all my life that California was going to slip into the ocean. You look at the science, it can't happen, and so but here we have the, this pounding information that's going to be scaring everybody. It's all trauma-based stuff. Uh, an 8.0 Tembler. Okay, they just had a 7.1 down in this area. It was a Ridgecrest, Ridge, Ridgecrest quake, which I understand also took out China Lake a bit. Well, that, that, okay, so they made, everyone made a lot of big deal about the China Lake military uh, the weapons station down there. Well, that just proves that man doesn't know what, what he's doing, first of all. All his scientists didn't build a building structure and buildings that would keep up with what was available down there. And then they put a West weapon system in there. But no, everyone's got to make a big hay over things just because they've got to be fascinating, create their own breads and circuses when it's not uh, not available. So the, this is a, interesting here is this fault has never moved that they know of, at least in the time of recordings. That's fascinating to me. All this movement that was supposed to happen, it's never moved in all, in all the time that we've been recording these things. No, it didn't move. It's measured to move. And what caught my eye was they said that this fault line that's never moved is bulging. That's what caught my eye, because that's a different dynamic, folks. That's, that's not plate tectonics. Now we're going to have some volcanism or something similar, maybe. There's a lot of energy and pressure coming down. We have that where we have volcanoes, and it's around the world. There's a couple. There's one up in Sister. It's a big bulge. Okay, so that's a different dynamic. That's not California falling off the ocean. Maybe it's also why... Well, we were talking earlier, it wasn't just the hydraulics of the water coming out of the uh, off the mountains. That in the Mediterranean climate of California, they got a bunch of rain finally. Normally they don't get it, but then they got it. And I said there's going to be a time when the water comes through the aquifer and it comes up, and then we had oil coming up in the valleys, didn't we? Well, maybe it's because of this too now we hear. All right, so we don't understand the problem and we don't know. Well, we better pay, pay more attention. doesn't mean we have to get lost in it. What are we going to do about it? If you're not living there, so for me, it's just interesting. I've always been interested in earthquakes and earth movement and science and all that stuff. It's just a fascination it carries with me. But is it real to me? Is there anything I can do about it? No, likely not. And so I don't have to get lost, more or less, in it. But I do want to look and see who these people that we take as a, the experts, as the people who are supposed to know, what do they say about that? And they tell you. Zachary Ross, assistant professor of geophysics at Caltech, says, we don't know what it means. That's perfect. I don't even want to laugh at that. That's honest. We don't know what this means, is what he says. And, in fact, you look at the story, and they don't know a whole lot about what this was. 
And so what do we, what do we, do we go ahead with, and this is just on earthquakes, maybe you don't care about them, but maybe they'll never affect you, but, well, you don't know, do you? But at any rate, science says they don't know. Science says that they can't tell what's happening here on something that's never moved before. They really don't have any evidence on what this all means, even if it did move, even if it did bulge. But you know, there was only rev one reference to the bulging. They never talked about the bulging anymore in the story. And that kind of bothers me a little bit because, you know, they want to cover some stuff up. So they give you a notice that it's there, but they're not going to give you any information. So it's either not there or it is they're not going to tell you that's a different dynamic that they don't have real want to be discussing. And it might be more serious. Uh, locally, it would actually be only locally than what they want to pre prevent, present to you. And so it's important that we, un as I want to keep pointing out, if it's a fraud, why do you consider arguing with it? In, th in this case, he didn't commit a fraud to say we don't know. That was perfect. But then to rely on anything that they say as fact and the point of it all, is, is you're, you're just fooling yourself. To give them any more um, off of point, to give them any time or energy or money to continue studies on something that they don't understand is going to be questionable. Because what all this time they still don't understand what is what what money are you dumping into that? What time are you doing it? It might be just as easy something you can't do something about, and it's natural. So you just gotta you just gotta anticipate it. In other words, build your stuff better. It's not it's not an earthquake that's the problem. It's are your man caused structures gonna fall on your head? And so it's not it's our interaction or misinteraction with our own nature of these things. I mean, how many people were here in, in Italy uh, running into the European, the narrow near, European uh, roads to have the buildings collapse on them? It wasn't the earthquake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the motive force for the buildings to move, but your buildings weren't strong. Oh, we go over, let's go to Japan. Those that had the skyscrapers had the money to dump in skyscrapers. The ones that, uh, the, I don't hear them falling down too much anymore. Those people didn't die. And so we got to maybe get a little more focused on what's real, really necessary here than being persuaded. They said that they didn't uh, they don't know about earthquakes. I agree. I mean these things are pretty they're fascinating. The dynamics are fascinating. But maybe it's just not something we can understand and maybe it's just if we know it's an eight point oh, that's just life. Stop being the trauma based news and uh, talking about oh we got an eight point oh but we don't know what it means. How, how did you even know that? If it's never moved before. And so we, again, just got to parse through all this information. I'm talking about this one earthquake thing. It could be any subject matter, and it is any subject matter, as I go through a week and notice all this nonsense information that doesn't seem like people put two and two together on, that it becomes something that was a waste of time. And here I'm taking time to describe it, which isn't really a waste of time if you actually get the light bulb to go off and do something with that. That is my, my colleague, uh, Miner, at the meeting said that's a flash bulb. Let's get a little bit longer burning. Flashbulb can be inspirational, but uh, we're talking about trying to be functional, and so let's not let's have this be a little bit more of a of a lesson here. They science tells us they don't know, and that's fair. I don't have a problem with science not knowing. It's when they claim to know. This is climate change. Then you know it's a political lobbying. You know it's a fraud, and anybody who argues that that isn't getting it. I don't care how smart you think you are, how intelligent you are, that you turn your dial when I just said that because you thought you had it all under control. When you are arguing with a fraudster, you're, make, you're not getting the point. You're just engaging them long enough so they can make a commitment to, or a, an agreement with someone else who's not as aware as you think you are. You give them the breath of air that keeps the problem going instead of shutting it down as the crime that it is. And so I appreciated the honesty. We just don't know. No, they know some stuff. That's fine. And there is some things that we need to understand about it. So we should invest in that. But then there, if you start focusing on what that is, you start realizing maybe we have a, we can refine what we do. And we don't have to buy into all this experts say, and we don't have to be persuaded by it. And we certainly don't have to listen to, if you will, turn, what does this turn out to be? It turns out to political laws that end up doing and interfering with you ultimately. And what happens? Ultimately, people still die, right? I mean, because the science is faulty. I don't care if you go the science of looking and studying to the science of engineering, the sciences that support engineering. We do pretty good, but we're not infallible. And so somewhere you start, these are the new priests, these kinds of things. The new priest says he's fallible. That's fine. Don't talk about infallibility now. Don't tell me you can predict something. Okay? 
Don't tell me that. They'll come with your arrogance and the self -re self reflection to show me how smart you are when it's just a nature that we don't have a concept of, which should be putting us in some humility, and it doesn't. But okay, so the scientists just said they don't know. Guess what California just puts out? Something they want you to start thinking about and relying on. And I don't know how fast this thing works, but it certainly can't be fast enough. I'll just tell you, your intuition about an earthquake is faster than this apple bee. I'll just tell you that. You may not appreciate that. I do, because I did it. I used to do it all the time. You live in a place where there's earthquakes, you can tune into them. You know when they're coming. You don't have much time, but you know they're coming. I told you this one, I think one or two, two times on this broadcast over the years. I could tell an earthquake was coming. I'd throw myself, just dive into a chair that I knew was, I, if I, when I got set, seated in it, it's all in seconds. You only have like 10, 15 seconds. And I'd sit in the chair, I'd take a big deep breath and exhale and keep my eyes open and just experience what was coming. And after I experienced what I saw, which is fascinating, I don't know how these things do what they do. We live in a plastic world if what I saw was real. But nevertheless, I could tell you what kind of earthquake it was, where it was, how far away it started. Way before an app, they're saying, California unveils first statewide earthquake app on something they don't know about, folks. They're calling it My Shake. Uh, I guess you get some fries with that or something. They're, California, even though their scientists said we don't understand this stuff, they're going to come out with a, a, a with a earthquake alert app. Now, why are they presenting people with this kind of an option? Well, all it's going to do is tell you there's an earthquake that you probably, if you tuned into nature, you'd probably know 15, maybe 20 seconds. Maybe you got more sense. Maybe you got the sense of an elephant knowing that the uh, the, the tsunami's coming. My limitation was like 25 seconds, I think, as early as I could get it. But I could see that thing coming, and I could tell you all about it when it passed. I could see it roll right through the room. And it has a shape, and it does things to the walls, whether that's just in my eyes or not. You can see these things. Then you can predict where it came from. But the point is, I'm sitting in a chair. If that building wasn't made to stand that, I may not live long, would I? So that wasn't too smart either. Or as, much, as cool as it was, maybe that wasn't so smart. Anyway, they have an app now. The scientists say they don't understand, but California is going to tell you they can kind of give you an alert. I don't understand that logic, and I don't understand what it does, except when I look at what it does to people, what it starts to condition them to. And remember, I want to remind you what happened in Italy when there was an imposition on the scientists to make them predict accurately when people died when they didn't. That failed. Those, those scientists weren't found liable. And this is the whole point of what I'm saying. They don't know. You can't put on them the liability of knowing. And there's likely no way to know. There's lots of things going on, lots of dynamics I'll tell you we can go through that can give you the indication there's lots of things going on that could raise the level of an, of some, of a, of an occurrence of an earthquake. But ultimately, certainly at this point, there's just not enough understanding about it all. But when you come out with these California, California unveils this my shake earthquake alert app, uh, you start relying on that. You're relying on the authority that doesn't know and an authority in the state that can't, has no capacity to know how to do this. And it offers it something to you to accept. Are you going to accept it? If you don't accept it, then you have to pick up the responsibility to protect yourself in different ways. Now, for those of you that don't live in earthquake areas, you may not have, have any clue what I'm talking about, and you don't care. But you have a different thing. It's not earthquakes. It may be a tornado. It may be a hurricane. It may be the blizzard. Yeah. It may be any other natural thing. It may be things we haven't seen yet. It may be other things that we have evidence of that's happening, that has happened, that hasn't happened yet. And we all do doom, doom, say that it's going to happen. Yeah, you can keep saying something's going to happen until it does. Now you're 100% right. You may be dead, but it's 100% right, isn't it? Finally. In the meantime, you haven't taken any uh, protections to, to mitigate all these things that are going to happen anyway. No, you rely on the expert to do it. And this is a mental conditioning that you rely on someone else to tell you to be alert, essentially. If the whole point is, is that you don't know any, any weather, any natural thing, is not actually predictable. We can get close, but the, the main damaging things are going to happen. You can't stop them. That's a different mindset than pretending you can predict it 
and it just becoming something that's a cycle. I guess that's what I guess I'm pointing out. Okay, I could I kind of predicted in spring the dynamic of this year for the weather. That's really not because I knew so much. It's an intuitional thing. I couldn't put it in a book. But had we looked ahead, it wasn't just knowing it and saying it. It was that it meant something to us. What do we see? Your food is destroyed. They've been Somebody's been telling us the food's going to be destroyed. Was it the uh, Gary L. the Deagle side? They're saying that there's only going to be a few hundred million people or in this world. Well, I don't know if that's the truth, but maybe someone understands that. Maybe someone has an intuitional sense. Most of us have been abandoned or been conditioned to pick up things like California can give you the protection you need in an alert for an earthquake. On something they admit, this is why these stories, two stories were important. Not because I want to tell you about earthquakes, but that they admit the experts don't know. Coupled with the idea that the experts that don't know then come up with a system of best science that actually is a political agenda against you. And they predict you into your future they want, not you want. And so we move on to more things about science and looking in stories. Some place that in some regard doesn't affect any of us unless you want to apply it to maybe... Uh, geoforming in the in the earth but cosmic rays form sand dunes on saturn's largest moon not rainfall fascinating look i have no problem looking at saturn and what might be going on in the geology up there pretty neat really 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 cool used to be a time we could barely see someone someone saw made a glass that we could see the, the rings now we've got um, robots uh, machines running up around looking around Cos but here we have a new group of people looking scientists who don't know about earth shakes they're going to go look on the look at Saturn's moon, and and uh, they're going to tell us well, now we're coming with a new theory about the sand dunes on uh, on the moon, Titan. And when you go read this, there's an interesting disconnect that happens. Let me read a little bit of this to see if we can get down to where it talks about it. It has long been believed the dunes of Saturn's largest moon formed from rainfall. Now you understand the atmosphere of of Saturn, of Titan, near Saturn, is hydrocarbons. In fact, if I read correctly, it's acetylene. It's a very heavy gas. In fact, they claim you could uh, you could strap wings to your arms and you could literally fly on this, uh, in this density. And in fact, I think there's going to send a they're going to send a, a robot that actually looks like a drone, a regular multi uh, multi rotor drone. Because the gravity is so light and the atmosphere is so thick, they can actually use props to drive it around, unlike other places like the moon. But reading on here, they think that the sand dunes, isn't that interesting? They can see sand dunes on Saturn's moon. That's cool. Uh, very neat. Experts now claim, experts say here, that the mounds were shaped through a chemical reaction when cosmic rays hit ice on Titan's surface. Now, this is interesting for the cosmic rays because they're underappreciated on the Earth relative to actual climate. And that, that's what makes this interesting, is that they're actually looking at these cosmic rays because they won't look at them here on the Earth, as one point here. Why do I point that out? Because once you understand there's a dynamic bigger than what the experts are looking at, the myopic view of the experts, maybe you shouldn't rely on all that. Maybe you shouldn't allow them to rely on that to diminish your life, is the most important point here. I'm not trying to talk about news here. I'm trying to talk about principles that we as a people have abandoned and allowed this nonsense we actually see. And I'm, I know a lot of the listeners, there, you're all reasonable. You, you see this nonsense, but, you know, just complaining about it's not happening. They're understanding the dynamic of how we see information and how it's, it's becomes overwhelming at some point, but it also how it detracts from our sensing the reality of the world, and that diminishes our ability to contend with or even keep up with it is one of the major problems that I see you know, where, like I say, why don't people come, if you're a libertine mind and you want to work some, make something work and stop being oppressed, why do you just complain? Why don't you come behind the woodshed? Again, it's not me beating you. It's you taking the knowledge, applying it to an oppression. You become the taskmaster, if you will. Why more people won't actually do that is just, is just just at one level, is astonishing. I don't know what to say. And those of you that do, I find interesting. You see exactly what I say. You don't know until you get involved what you're up against. It's positive or negative. 
and you won't know until you actually get involved. Looking at it from a distance, you'll never see this. But looking at this story here in Titan, fascinating cosmic rays going to make sand dunes, folks. Now, my knowledge is I don't know if there's any mechanism for that. So let's keep reading here. The experts now claim that the mounds were shaped through a chemical reaction. The team recreated the process in a lab and found it created the same organic molecules found in dunes and could explain similar formations on other planets or moons with no atmosphere. There it is. How is the creation by cosmic ray, and I've talked to you about this in making water on the moon, this is not even new, interesting news, this is just them now, science saying that they're going to recognize a cosmic ray can do something. Science knew that, but they, they want to deny it for some reason. But how is the creation of organic molecule found in a dune predictive of the dune's construction? And from an a, a, with a, on a planetoid, if you will, a moon, that has an atmosphere. How are they ex extrapolating that to a planets or moons without atmosphere? Is the problem a big disconnect here? I have no, no doubt about cosmic rays reaction with molecule, with the, any type of chemistry, any element. We talked about you know, nuclear, <laughs> carbon 30, chlorine 36, all that stuff, folks. It's all there. It's fascinating. High energy physics, if you will. Denied on the earth, but now looking to terraform. The geomorphology, folks. But, okay, let's go look at that. How does the creation of a chemical make make the construction of a terrestrial, some terrestrial form in the ground? Well, maybe, let's go look and see just the first part of this geomorphology on Wiki really quickly. Surface of the Earth now, we'll just apply this to other places, I suppose. They, they say it's specific to the Earth here on Wiki. Interesting to me. But anyway, showing uh, higher elevations, geomorphology is the scientific study of the origin and evolution of topographic and bathmic, bathmetric features created by physical, chemical, or biological processes operating at or near the Earth's surface. Geomorphologists seek to understand why landscapes look the way they do, to understand landform history and dynamics, and to predict changes through a combination of field observations, physical experiments, and numerical modeling. There's your modeling problem. Physical experiments we haven't done, and field observations is there's a dune. Oh, and there's some chemicals in the dune. Well, there would be, wouldn't there, because it's made of material. But let's go back. Let's look at what it comprises of. This geomorphology comprises of different elements. Physical, chemical, and biological, in the minimum. These do not predict the morphology at all. It's just what you'll find could cause it. And so we go back to the story, and you find out that cosmic rays create chemistry. Wow, cool. They finally got the point. I don't know that that's been a question. But anyway, right, they're going to not make a big deal. And now they're going to say the mere construction of a, of, a, of a molecule actually moves mountains, folks. And so, do we want to believe in that regard? I don't want to destroy the, fast, the fantastic thing that looks like, you know, understanding our, our nature at all. But when we start paying taxes and or whatever, we go on to support people that would make the leap in, within a context of science that a chemical itself now creates morphology. And we're going to now spend some time on this. We're looking at another style of fraud. I have no problem about maybe looking out into the solar system and the universe and all that stuff, but you see what happens behind unproven frauds like dark matter. Like the existence of the sun, what it is. Trying to put a gas theory on something that can't happen, folks. And yet it becomes the basis for all what we do, all the rules that come down. All the things that they ignore, in fact, were the climate change, the punitive harm they blame you for. They'll say that's telling us something about locality, our locality on the earth, and yet it doesn't. How There's no correlation. And so they say this correlation of the creation is the causation of a dune. Cannot happen in science. I know it sounded fantastic. It caught me. I want to go read it. I want to, I want to believe, folks. But if we keep 
thinking that this is our little data point that we can put in our mind. Oh, we got dunes that are created, and this and extends to non-atmospheric planets. We start giving these people that are actually promoting frauds power. And this is just one example. I mean, most of you don't care. I can imagine you don't care about how a dune is made on Titan. I get that. This is just an example I'm trying to point out that what they do to you that you may not see locally. And it would take, you're talking, talking about critical thought, you got to find, as I said, you've got to find the things that stop making sense, and either it's interesting enough to pursue because it can hurt you to not know it, or it's something that it destroys your, uh, the ability to put more time and justify more time into it. I'll take away what I will take away, but they found out that the chemistry they found in a lab, this is all they proved, is that how they actually did this, I'm not sure, it had to be an analog, cosmic rays will cause chemical molecules to be formed. Perfect. Perfect. But beyond that, I'm not so sure. And so for those of us here on Earth that are suffering under climate change and the carbon uh, buildup, boy, oh boy, what are they going to do when man gets to Titan? Clean that place up, folks. You understand this other stupidity? I hope you picked that up when I went to acetylene. It's a hydrocarbon. The atmosphere is full of it. It's nature, folks. Now, that one's not going to grow a plant, I don't think, well, unless it's a special type of organism. But the point is that the nature is full of hydrocarbons. Carbon. They want to end it on, the, on, on Earth. Now, go look at Titan and tell me how much life you see there with all its carbon. And they want to end the carbon here. Go find a, go look at the moon. How much life do you see on a carbonless moon? And yet it's not carbonless. If you look closer. So we can go ahead and allow these experts to say, which have now been slowly contorted into political lobbyists. We heard that in the papers in 1985. That will present something for you to buy into. No, as I said, that buy into was what William, the late William Roberts always told you. You got to, they got to get public buy-in. He used to always say that. Now, he said that stuff, but I, we were talking in the background exactly consistent. I came to the same points in ends up being a lawsuit in 2013, folks. It's all the same. It all ties in together. They get you to buy into this stuff. This is what I've been trying to explain. You all will say, yeah, I don't agree with that. Well, but there's, it, that's not about that. It's about understanding that you may not agree with that, but they're doing something else you're likely by these same methods of, of of fraud, of the assumption of authority, the assumption of a, of a knowledge in a subject matter that has absolutely no way to actually know that, that you would buy into locally, is my point. I want to get people to see through this nonsense very quickly. And when you see that, if you have to be angry, it should anger you so that you get active to stop these things. Uh, to this week, I just found it in science again. And it happens to be the punitive nature of the so-called best science relative to, let's say, climate change is all a fraud. Why are we buying into it as a society? Why are we not buying into it but not moving to stop it? As I keep saying, we do like behind, uh, like I tell you behind the woodshed here about Jefferson Mining District relative to coordination and how we go through those processes and how far, in fact, we talked a little bit about this at the meeting this week, this last week, how far the action of coordination, the, uh, the door opening through there get, has given us a comprehensive view and ac access that we would have never had before to, for as minimally as we have people working on it, a few people we have, how fast it was able to move forward when we can quickly cut through these types of frauds that I've been talking about. Happens to be this one's in science. They tell you they don't know. Believe them, folks. And they tell you they do know. Don't believe them. But what are you going to do? I, I, I'm not a I'm not a weatherman per se. I told you I got a little bit of study behind it. I told you how this year was going to go. I really didn't know how that was going to happen. That it comes out is actually kind of a surprise to me because it actually did turn out that way. But people ought to be protecting themselves ahead of time. It's not just hearing it. It's responding to it. I don't know what more to say, folks. And that's just the simple stuff. Us against nature, or us with nature, us living in the nature... Is it actually totally different in some regard than what man does against himself in the civil context, if I can say that word, in the societal context? That's why a lot of you want to go to natural law. You forget you are the natural law. And there's others that are in the natural law violating you with a surrogate. And that's the contention, isn't it? 
And so I come along and say, well, be careful. Get it. Why don't you just work through the innocent side of all this, not buy into anything until someone can first show they have the authority to make a say. You know, a scientist can say I have the right because I've been trained. doesn't give him the right to tell you anything anyway. doesn't give him the right to make a contribution to a legislation that's going to change your life. And I've shown you there's other ways to address that. You don't go in through that same that same mechanism comes to oppress you. You counter that. And I liken it to a keto. You know, you use the energy uh, against the force against you to your benefit and against the uh, aggressor. I don't know. I've never I've never done that style. I just what I hear and watch and see and sense, folks. It, that's an intuitional response to you. And so there's a takes a whole different mindset about how I look at all the world anymore. Not and not so uniquely, I think, because it sounds similar to lots of people, but it's a little different than accepting in that all the it's a little different than not accepting the lie you you can clearly see or disregarding the the one that you know would be a lie because it makes it stop making sense it's taking that knowledge and putting into application where it affects you or those you love essentially and hopefully your love can expand out to bigger things like your society notwithstanding they those in the society may not be worthy of it at this point. That's the harder part, looking through all that. But part of me just wants to stop, folks. I mean, just in one regard, without no, without without an insult, y'all aren't worth it. <laughs> it's over, folks. And on the other hand, it's completely worth it. It's absolutely the next moment us turning around and doing something. And it won't be la la land because we're fall of our fallen nature. That's a truth. But we can mitigate that. We can work hard to mitigate all that stuff. Don't let people that pretend to be experts say anything. And so what is what is society, does society respond, though, is another point that came out relative to the political impositions that come through best science. Angry Londoners drag climate change protesters from roof of tra- chain. Train, excuse me. I get it right. Roof of a train. And uh, inside me, I said, great. Get rid of those guys. The climate change protesters, nothing but someone tried to sell the fraud to everybody. They don't talk about it that way, but that's what got my caught my mind. Oh, well, how? what did these people, these Londoners, why did, why did they drag these protesters off the roof of the train? That came right after my thought about, oh, isn't, that, isn't that cool? Someone's responding. See, I responded to, I interpreted that with my prejudice that people responded for the right reason. And I quickly checked my own ignorance and said, let's go find out why. And you know when you read the story why Londoners dragged a climate change protester from the roof of a train? To my astonishment, folks, I mean, just almost de- complete defeat. It wasn't because climate change is a fraud. No, it's because these people on the train were interfering with the daily routine of the Londoners. To get back to work and do the trudgery every day underneath the impositions that austerity is bringing because of climate change. The people did not respond because it's a fraud being used to destroy their lives and create them to be criminals. No, they did it because it interfered with their daily routine. Folks, don't take don't take the beer away. Don't get rid of the football games. Don't get rid of the NBA. No, don't do that. So, my shoulders drooped again. People didn't respond for the right reasons. It's what I tell you all the time. You can respond, is it for the right reason? Do you have a principle in you that's working? Really and truly, does it get you to the better day? Or does it just keep you in the same one you've muddled into and want, and, the, and those that have got you there keep you there? I mean, all, the, all these analogies in my mind I've ever told you start flashing in my mind right now. I'm going to just stop talking because there's just so many evidences that we will not respond in the right way Uh, at all to the oppressions that we see. We will maintain our status in the the slavery, I just put the slavery, that we've been born into and can't find our way back out of. And I want people to start getting beyond knowing that's there and not responding to it in the proper way. Boy, you know, I would have, again, this is the protest gone wrong. This is like, be careful, France. 
You, you guys are going to, it's important to get out there, but there's another way to go, do it, and you can do it without the jeopardy and point out the fraud. Look at Beirut, folks. Look at what's going on. Then you got the specter of the potential spring, right? This is an outside influence. But the people standing up or they're fed up. That's one. That's a riot outside. That's one way to do it. No one's dying at this point for some of them. But there's die people dying in other places. Look at Hong Kong. People are fed up, but are they? Are they responding? You know, it's like the uh, the Antifa getting involved, and you respond the wrong way. Here, London Londoners drag a climate protester from the roof of a train it was not for the reason that that climate change is a fraud and and these policies that sustainable development bring on are 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 a crime literally war crime against people. No, it wasn't for that reason. It was because they were interfering with the daily routines of the Londoners. It's a sad commentary, folks. I don't know what else to say. When you think the United States of America is more uh, more resistant to it, and we see this story, uh, based in the same climate change, the carbon, folks, this is all a punitive harm that they've made you the criminal, and you don't respond to this. California's energy crisis, blackouts and $5 gasoline. It's it's coming in and in the United States. You don't respond where the where the transportation is. People want us will are inter, are screaming because they can't get back into their trains over there in London to be shuttled back and forth and through their normal daily routine so they don't get interfered with. Californians will pay for it. Five dollar a gallon gasoline, energy blackouts. Can't even begin to start talking about the the crime about the power company there. And people allow it. There's no response. They're not even responding in California, actually. Unprecedented blackouts and continually rising gasoline prices are highlighting California's energy crisis. No, it's not. It's the imposition of sustainable development, and, and the people are losing. It's the injustice of allowing a, com a, a company, a, a corporation, that has a monopoly on utility and power to violate the very reasons why that utility and power was uh, was to be made available on the federal level. In other words, guarantee its supply. Not create conditions where you can make excuses that cost too much for maintenance. No, that was supposed to be part of it. Remember, I reported on that what, relative to the bankruptcy court where they actually made made that excuse. And I asked the question, is the judge going to allow that? Are they really going to go there that they don't want to spend their money to do maintenance on a system that's supposed to be up? I don't know what the actual high percentage is, but most all the time, 99% at least, that they're allowing blackouts is austerity, folks. It's not because of law and, 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 and the necessity of the public anymore. Uh, I just talked to you about some science. They'll have all their sciences. I've told you this alternative dispute resolution sits inside this. The same thing that is the imposition, the best science is used through this uh, sustainable policies that uh, that you are don't even know you're living under. I told you this is all done back in the 80s to implement this stuff. You think it's just this new thing right now. Uh, but this is the ramifications. You will live on austerity. You don't want those me the smart meters? Okay, we're gonna knock, you're not going to have power anyway. And nobody understands where the cause is here. They want to think that they'll be accepting of it because someone's doing it in their best interest. Scientists said they know. Government says it knows. And here you're paying for it. $5 a gallon for food. Wait till the cost of potatoes happens here. If this thing is pretty big and it sustains itself over in the Midwest, watch out, folks. Look into the future. Now, the future happened in the sustainable development stuff in the past. You're now seeing it being rolled out. And here we, here we talk again. The multifaceted action of government, the occupiers that you thought was working for the people, working against the people continuously in a multidimensional way. While you were all distracted from power outage, the California governor passes 15 gun control laws, including red flag laws. Okay, there it is. You all complain about California. You all don't even live in the place. You know, it's not red flag laws that have been happening on the east. When's the, when's the outcry and action happen to stop this nonsense? It's so bad even, I think I have a story here. What is it? It's so bad even the uh, ACLU is not liking this one. Well, they mentioned the NRA uh, and then the uh, 
California Rifle and Pistol, they oppose the law. Who cares? Oppose the laws. How? What are you doing to stop this? What are you bringing to bring the substantial law to stop it? Well, they're taking taking you out the things that you need in power and fuel to get around, interfering with your right to travel, not as the right you all think it is, but the right to use the road to do what you were doing, and the undertaking and duty the government took on to maintain the supply of all that. You go silent when they start to do more to stop and refine and reduce how that's going to work. You start having a complaint, you think you have a Second Amendment right, they don't care. Well, they put the strain on you of all this trauma-based stuff is going to happen to you next minute that they can't predict and they admit they don't know about. They put in the legislation that's going to further the condition that they are the future they want. Well, here it is. Well, we're all distracted. 15 gun control laws. I don't know just, just the number. I mean, I guess the number doesn't really surprise me too much because I was dealing with, when we were looking at the, right before the lawsuit in the one legislative session, I was looking at, you know, thousands of, of legislation, pieces of legislation that did all kinds of stuff. You know, dozens and dozens of bills for do, any particular subject matter were coming up. And we were trying to field most of it. We did, actually. I did field most of it. Didn't get quite get all of it, but we got the most important ones. Enough, enough to get that lawsuit up. But here we have it. Fifteen new laws. Who steps up to stop them? The, uh, the, the organ of the union that you've all, uh, NRA members, uh, you should have had some power out of San Francisco, but, but you don't listen. No one listens behind the woodshed enough to go implement themselves and make themselves powerful, get the questions into the public in a much more substantial way in the right way. Uh, here, they're doing the same thing in your, your Second Amendment, so-called. Governor signs 15 new gun control bills in America's worst red flag law. You read the story, folks. Don't disregard it. I'm just reading the headline. Go in the story and see even the ACL tells you what I told you behind the woodshed is the problem. Where are you to defend yourself? And this doesn't cause you and require that you do anything physical in the sense of physical uh, force and response. Even though you have the right. See, this is the facial violation you're doing to yourself. Talk about a split personality. I have the right, but they're taking the right. I won't respond with it. I won't respond with a thing. Oh, uh, that guy behind the woodshed, I'm going to tune away. And I'm not going to call no one in because he's just too complicated. It's too hard. Oh, you got to actually think about something. you got to actually do something. It doesn't happen automatically. I can't rely on the experts. I can't buy into the fact that they're helping me. They're here to secure my future. Now, they're securing your future the way they want it, folks. It's pretty simple. California new red flag gun law, so extreme, ACLL deemed significant threat to civil liberties. Would you ever have thought that? A group of bar members who agree and promote the not tight in the, bed, uh, the uh, barrel of a gun have also been violated here. Talk about being triggered. If, if, if the writing is on the wall, if the flag isn't big enough here, if the neon lights aren't flashing for you all, I don't know what will. I really don't know. been talking about this stuff for years, and I see nobody co getting together cohesively to work any of this out. And then I found this little story. Just somehow I read the title, and I read the first paragraph, and it just triggered a whole different thought about what I've just read, about how people are supposed to have the rights and the freedom, even the freedom, even the con civil constraint within a society, notwithstanding the natural being free naturally within the constraint of that, because everything's got a range of motion, constrained by usually a bigger force, and Mother Nature is quite a force to reckon with, so much so that we don't even understand her. Oh, but we'll want to protect her, like we understand that. See, it's a cover, stalking horse. At any rate, I read this story. Y'all with First Second Amendment rights, y'all with the rights of property, y'all with the rights of ingress and egress, y'all with the rights to water, uh, whatever, whatever you want to go on and on. The right to shut and tell the people to shut down that are only uh, admit they don't know what they're talking about, but try to come up with an app that will inform you of how much in danger you are and give them some kind of a power and control. I don't know if you appreciate that. They get that worked out. They start getting the ability to, to, to make, based on those fraudulent alerts, They'll get the power to shut you down 
in a different way, you know, you call it martial law, it'll be police powers for your safety. Talk about austerity. At any rate, here I read this with all the Second Amendment rights going on and all the theft that's going on, all the governmental impositions that are happening. I look at our society and I just shake my head and I, when I read this, it, it just somehow came more present. El Chapo's, El Capo's family to cover costs of those killed in botched arrest. This is the drug lord's son they're talking about here. About the botched arrest. The drug kingpin, the family of a jailed drug kingpin, Joaquin El Capo Guzman, have said they will cover the expenses of those injured and killed during a failed attempt to capture his son in Mexico. At least eight died and more than 20 were injured after National Guard officers were overpowered by heavily armed gangsters as they tried to apprehend a video Guzman uh, on charges of trafficking cocaine, metaf methamphetamine, and marijuana. The, the Gonzalez Mesa, the lawyer of Guzman's family, said, quote, The family apologizes to the people of Sinaloa and particularly to the people of Culiacan, however, many of them, many there were man, no problem. They will help them economically. So this gun gang, supposed gang drug dealer, which we already have, remember, there's a U.S. thing here as well. They're going to appease the, count, the, the, the city that they turned their own armed forces on to release some their, the leader. And they use heavy weapons to do this. Is going to now pay for the damages caused in the protection of that citizen, if I could put it that way. And you might say, well, he's a drug dealer. They're just fighting. You know, that's what a, what a criminal does. Uh, fair enough. But why are these people protecting one who got violated against what they think is their ability to do? And when you look at all the hypocrisy in the world, how are they more armed and ready to defend one who was coming, who, who was being arrested, than y'all are in the United States with the rights that all of you are being attacked and none of you defend yourself with the very same heavy weapons? And you don't even have to go there, is what I've been telling you. How are these people in Mexico more responsive to defend themselves when the National Guard comes after their people than you are in America? I don't even know. I mean, that's just, I don't even know where to go with that more than just sit here and not know what to say beyond it. Why are we in America supposed to have all these rights and we will not defend, not even to write a letter and be persistent? Is what I guess I'm getting at. I forget the heavy weapons. I think that's a done deal because we're still in the Civil War and we lost. The people lost. And you haven't changed that in me, in me, uh, the, the facts of that to change that thought in me. And I'm not asking for that. I think that would be a failure for us to go there. Anyway. But how is it people that are deemed criminals in society are actually exercising the right of the Second Amendment to defend one of their own. And I turn around and look at the United States and no one's defending their rights at all. I, to me, I don't know what I, like I said, I get, I start to not know what to say more. An ever-vigilant population to protect themselves, keep that republic. This would be the last thing we'd want to see but we're not even doing the first thing. And there's a group of people who apparently don't have that Second Amendment right. It's the first thing they go to to protect themselves against what they see as an oppression. They are going to take the responsibility to pay the people that they harmed in that protection. And I hope you appreciate, I'm not looking at the criminal, a state saying someone's a criminal here. I'm saying that you have relative rights you believe you need to defend. I've got a, a nation of people that have no criminal aspect whatsoever against their rights, and they won't defend them in the first moment, except to complain, send a Twitter, whatever, whatever, send a Facebook. It, it just, 
mind-boggling, actually, to me. I, literally, I don't have much more I can say about it. There's not an analysis I can start to become with. That seems to me facially the proof, the self-evident proof of our failure in a society that purports, and I would say pretends, to have any rights at all. Why is it? Why did those people defend them, and successfully, folks, when just one of them got attacked, and none of you peri dogs will do anything when you're all attacked? It, to me, is a fascinating observation of failure, given the standard we were supposed to keep. And we get to here. Cops walk up to family's home unannounced and shoot dad in the back through a window. Where was the armed protection that when the government itself failed, its duty to protect, and works on a more of a military standpoint that you're just a criminal? You're a, a felon. You're an enemy combatant. We shoot first and ask, a, well, cover it up later. Where was the outpouring of protection immediately like a, like a hive of hornets to protect against this condition? Where it can be shown, and I think the record can be made real easy and you should make it up front. But the people that are, take the so-called oath to protect and serve are killing one of your own. Where was the where was the response that happened in Mexico in the United States over this? Cops walk up to a family's home unannounced and shoot dad in the back through a window. I told you this day was coming. You can't even be innocent in your own home. Now, there's some circumstances we can go through. I guess there would be the license given to the cops to do this to, by some. But we're all supposed to be presumed innocent, and we're supposed to be a real reason why you uh, shoot someone in self-defense. Not the made-up, I feared for my life stuff, but there's real standards to be met that are not applicable to the cops. And I don't see anybody standing up to question that, let alone coming out like a hive of hornets to take down these cops that shoot someone in the back in their own home. Now, vigilante justice? Well, this is the problem, isn't it? Because the system has lied it's best science. They have lied to say that they're there to protect and serve you, and you've agreed that they're there to protect and serve you. It's come to the point when you look at this stuff, they're not protecting and serving any one of us. In, in Mexico, they come after a criminal. They're out there to protect each other. In America, one innocent man is not protected whatsoever by anyone. Now, luckily, this gentleman did not die. Oh, because we have cash to pay off the problem as another violation to our principles. We agree to that. But where was everybody? One, the cops shoot one man, an innocent man no less, not a criminal. No, 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 no. Well, we don't even know if the gentleman done in the, the, the Guzman's a criminal yet. He hasn't been tried. He's been part of a crime family. Okay, well, likely, but we can't prove it yet. But at any rate, let's go ahead and give him a conviction. Let's violate that old, our own principle. Even someone with a conviction of being some drug gang member had more protection against a violation of the cops than this innocent man in the United States with all the rights that we have. It's stunning to me. Yes, we're out of practice on all this. I know that. Yes, it sounds vigilante. But when you are have made the record that the government itself has failed, and that's why I ask you to make records and go in and make the policies that would stop this stuff and bring the accountability we need that we don't have to go here. But when you start watching a nation of people that are 100% uh, subjects, let me short of the people that have the license to kill you, and you're not protecting the least among you, the most vulnerable among you, who are you as a people? I'm walking a very narrow path here, a very tight rope, to suggest what I'm suggesting here. And I don't want to see it go to the physical side. I want to shock you a bit. I hope it's shocking you just a little bit. Why are you not responsive where you have all the rights to protect another innocent man like you to be subject to that violation tomorrow, possibly? And yet we look at the example so-called over the border that's not supposedly having all the rights, and those people are defensive of themselves down to the man. I'm not looking at right or wrong, and as I said, we can't actually convict ahead. And no, I don't agree that the government makes right decisions to do anything. And no, I don't agree that the judiciary is a judiciary anymore. Part of my problem with what I tell you about how you have to start addressing that. 
these institutions have failed, but we've allowed it. So we have a different type of view. But even so, where was the hornets coming out of the houses to defend a man who was innocent in his front room, being shot in the back by cops, as a take an oath and a duty to protect you under their their stories, their fairy tales uh, that they, f they feared for their lives? Where are we to truncate the problem of the psychologically instable badge holder, the, un the IQ deficient badge holder, as the Supreme Court allows? Where were we to stop that against this in the first instance? And then if we were trying and they still won't, where are we reflecting what Mex the Mexico people will do for their own, criminal or not? Why have we given as a people, given over in the United States, over to this authority in the color of costumes, in the form of various institutional things, whether it be the Bar Association and the robes, the, the attorneys, whether it's the state itself, the agencies that have no authority, the uh, local councils and commissions, the local code enforcement, the cops themselves, the sheriff. And what, what was amazing to me when we worked with the sheriff he only went halfway, which is fantastic because you know, we got halfway. But that how people didn't support that in the society was another interesting observation. He didn't last in the office after he started to actually follow the law and even as much as, they, as he went. No, we got some other I idiot SWAT team guy that took his, took his place. That we, he does nothing, nothing to help um, bring accountability. Where was the hornet's nest to come protect this man? And this is just one. You know the stories were replete daily, how people are getting shot to death, uh, all these so supposed plausible reasons I feared for my, my life and all this other stuff they're bringing on. Where are we as a society to come out like the hornets? And uh, boy, do I stop short to say what I want to say next about an immediate justice. See, there's not supposed to be the question of the impropriety, folks. That's how far wrong we are. So I've been asking you behind the woodshed, you bring these guys behind the woodshed by bringing the policies that they cannot uh, do so we can avoid having to be like Mexico, notwithstanding that, that we're supposed to have all these rights we're supposed to have. I, I want to see a more peaceful resolution and I want to see a record made that there was we're back to the Declaration of Independence uh, but in a way that most people are following it, not just 10%. That didn't work, folks. I, I don't, I'm just kind of stuck. Just what cops walk up to families home and unannounced and shoot dad in the back. I don't. I'm just stuck on that. Especially after reading the one, one the cop, the National Guard comes after one one of their guys, good, bad, or, or indifferent, and out comes the heavy weapons and support. And I guess part of my mind, I've read enough, folks. I've seen enough court cases. I've seen enough things that the authorities already have to understand the dynamic. To know that they have to hold a certain line. And when they don't, they're liable to that and it can be exposed that none of you have. And then we start getting to this point that you either are going to be taken out by a red flag law or less, just the cops walking up to your house. You'll be taken out like I've told you you will as an innocent man. Or else we're going to go to that point where we're going to have to defend ourselves like the hornets. And I'm not talking about the Civil War that everyone's hyping up. See, they want to get you to not talk about that either because that's false when you have a principle you're protecting all that falls away and you're on the principle and if it, the principle is the principle it doesn't matter your left or right handedness politically so they get you to buy into all that stuff too but we're talking about a society where the people that take on, put on the costumes to protect and serve are killing you or maiming you I, innocent people or, as we've identified, under the color of the excuse I feared for my life, national security, make you a criminal. Or, under the international imposition of sustainable development, or a punitively liable criminal. Without due process at all. That's not much different than national security. So you see how far they've gotten us to do. They can have the same action come from any, any angle they want. Why don't, I just thought when I said that, why do people... Start thinking about this and not, okay, I know that. Then start to apply it. Anyway, here we go. Cop walk up to your house, shoot you. Where's the hornets in protect? Where's your fellow citizens, fellow citizens? 
forget about all the attachment the word citizen means. You're within a social structure. That's what that means, actually. But it may have any one particular meaning as another analysis. So let's, let's stop this mental masking that we do. You're going to have to settle down and put your, put, I don't care, as I said, stop calling yourselves names anyway. Just find a principle to stand on and let's go from there. Pre proceed from innocence and find everybody that calls you not. Then go, don't go look at whether or not they really had that authority. Don't complain about it. Moving on. I mentioned it before. Your breads and circuses. You don't respond to the things you should respond. No, the Londoner, you respond to climate change because it, got, it, it interfered with your routine. The drudgery of your everyday routine as the legislature, the parliament, makes laws to make your life more austere and more difficult. China, the NBA, and the massive face of globalism. Why am I going here? Because this face of globalism is already in you. I've just been talking about it indirectly. We have a name for it. We can give it one of the names. It's called uh, sustainable development. But, but that's just a cover for the military one either. As I told you, we can just mask this whole thing as well by lots of things if we want to, uh, unless we look at it. I mean, it's all masked by kinds of lots of things. China, the massive face of globalism. Talk about the NBA and the breads and circuses of games, folks. You, you'd rather make, when you see the, the corporation capitulated to the power of China relative to statements that were made about China. And they capitulated to, we just want to what? What was the statement that came out? I got a story, you can go to get it. We just want to play ball. We just want to play basketball. We just want the games. Breads and circuses, folks. Don't pull the climate change people off the train because they're committing crimes against humanity. No. You pull them off because you want your train to go to get you to your job so you can drudge around for eight more hours to pay your taxes to the government to bring home your pittance and hope you have enough to feed yourself. We just want to breads and circuses this, is what the answer out of there in China. This is critical to understand. There's a capitulation going. You want to talk about corporatocracy? It didn't exist here, but it did exist to fulfill what the future's pretending for us. China controlling what you'll see, how you'll see it, diminishing all statements against the authority that's, that has the power to hurt you, and becoming, as you see, as I was, I haven't got to responded to it, we, I told you about the pivot to China, that Obama, they wanted to make it look military. I said, no, that's the pivot to your world, your future life, to China, and what they're doing. Let's watch, and we've been doing that over for years. And I've, I've talked numerous times about all the different aspects of China been given, what it's been given in the power to bring out, improve out the methods of monitoring, tracking, uh, and manip data um, m manipulation for what? Their outcomes. This is all, again, alternative dispute resolution. But in this case, there is no alternative. They are the power. The NBA players or something, I don't even look that close at the story. I just look at what their response is. They made an insult, supposed insult. They had to backtrack. China told them what was going to happen. They said, okay, we just want to play games. We just want to provide the breads and circuses to your people because we make lots of dough on that. So you're being sold out. The people of China are being sold out. But this is the glo a global reflection. Was what's China doing? What? They're doing all the uh, art so-called artificial intelligence, big data. They're doing all the monitoring. They're doing all the surveillance. They're tracking and tracing. They're doing all the monetary policy that's been accepted by the West through the different functionaries. I've talked about all of this. It's not, I don't even know, it's not even a question to me. It just sits there in the back of my mind, just writing, just writing over everything I watch. In my mind, looking, okay, that's plugging in here, that's here, that's there. And then I get this story, bringing it back to the West, what's happening in China relative to all of this digital manipulation, control, accessing, and this and that and the other relative to China. And when they said something, the corporation capitulated to provide the people breads and circuses, which they buy into literally with a ticket and sit down and don't do anything else for themselves. Just like they do in America, no difference. Let's get to the West now. And I think this came from, this is the story that came from Grimner uh, through Twitter to me, I think as a heads up or a acknowledgement of what I said before. What this 
whole setup is about uh, starting to move through and to be careful of certain aspects. China is doing the monetary control. They're doing the physical control, the behavioral control. They're setting all the models. They're setting up all the programs. They're, they're a large population to do so. It's not 100% because they got some adjustments to make when they come back west, but it's already happening. Canada, Kanukistan, is the forefront of the implementation, one of the forefronts of the implementation of sustainable development. Canada, has said, and this was just given to me here this last week uh, from Grimner relative to something I've said in the past relative to your digital currencies and central banks and how they've been telling us they've got it work, they're working on it to make it for them. And I've talked to you, I won't go through all of it again. If you've heard it, you've heard it. If you haven't, Get up to speed. Find the, the past casts. Now, the report, Canada Exploring Digital Currency to Track People's Spending Habits. That's the least of it, folks, on the title. But this is an acknowledgement, I think, of what I told you. These digital currencies, will they can, they're wild west right now. And while you can, go ahead. But at some point, they're going to be transitioning, at least the, 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 the ones that are legitimate and recognized, and the evidence of other ones will be crime. Like they make punitive everything else. They just make having a cryptocurrency a crime. Uh, the, your currencies by the national imposition through the central banks is coming. It's, it's what the central, this is what the digital currency is about. They're getting you to work out the problems for them, and they just adjust it to what they want. Is a report here that now Canada, Kanukistan is uh, have central bank is reporting considering launching a proprietary digital currency. I've said that also. Whoever owns the blockchain owns that currency. It's not decentralized, folks. Now, I'm not saying that there may not be decentralized currencies. They're not, it would be digital uh, trading mediums is all they are. They're not, don't call them currencies. Central banks have the currencies. This is that world. You're not entering into that world. You're not controlling that world. But eventually, you want to do something that's authorized across the broad spectrum of your life, you'll be working with a digital currency that's proprietary digital currency. This is critical to understand right off the first sentence. All right, It's, it's confirming what I've told you before. It's all written down about all this, though. All right, so I don't know what to say. I want to talk about more of this stuff, but why? I mean, you're either going to be blindly agreeing to digital, you know, bitcoins and this and that and thinking that's the bee's knees. It's the thing that we have to do and not realize it's actually not decentralized. Someone does have control of it, and it's in a medium that's completely vulnerable. Or you're going to realize it's been set up and handed to us to buy into it. It's the tool of the future for governments. In other words, you go back to China, you think all those people that went into an NBA game were going to be able to get a ticket that didn't come through their phone, through their social credit, to be able to get the ticket and their money be debited immediately from whatever social account that they had? And it's proprietary. They're telling you now exactly. I guess I could read this, but why? You're interested to see where the reality is going you will get this link later in the broadcast, uh, after the broadcast posts, and you'll start seeing really what I've been saying, nuances of it coming through and admitted now it's happening. First in Canada, in the West, as, I, as we, we can see, the Kanukistan is like the leading edge of all this. And those of you in Canada, uh, Kanukistan know that. China's new cybersecurity program, no place to hide. All these stories came together, folks. To me, they're telling us and uh, they're giving us the notice of what's on the horizon. I, it's actually in play. You, you hear now that nations are working now, national, straight currencies that are proprietary. Who owns that, folks? You ever think about, did you think about that when I said it's proprietary? You say, well, who owns that? If it's a nation, if it's a governmental nation, this abstraction with the borders on the ground with a name, who, who is it that owns that proprietary currency it should terrify you. You don't need to know the name. It should terrify you that they've just said that. And anything outside of those systems are going to be outlaw. And the, the, some of you will say, okay, fine. And I'm trying to tell you, if you're going to go there, you better be a whole lot more prepared than just a complainer. A whole lot more prepared. And likely in the area, subject matter areas that make you distinct and not touchable. Because right now, just touching all that and not having the answers around it are going to make you liable to it all. And they're going to fail at every turn on any obligation and duty that you ever thought that they were cover, using cover for. And you haven't learned how to address it. So they're going to win that day, every day. China, 
new security cyber program, no place to hide, is coming to Kanukistan soon. It's coming to the United States soon. It's coming to every other British uh, queen, queen possession soon. You think the, the queen's not going to own that currency? Or at least have an organization that she holds the exclusive interest to ultimately? China, China's new cyber, no place to hide for all of you that think that you can be anonymous. Anybody in the system will be not anonymous. Those of you trying to be in the system that want to be anonymous will be criminals. Digital dystopia. Now let me go back to the new cybersecurity program and uh, what they were talking about there was that they've handed this situation to their Ministry of Security, who is a big data expert and he will be tasked with making a sense of raw data that will ga be gathered under the new system. That was another point I just remember to tell you. Go back to that story. Remember I told you that they make stuff up. They're in control of the data. They make the algorithms. Your life is what they s will be what they say. Then we hear digital dystopia, how algorithms punish the poor. They make the algorithms. You're all going to be the poor. What do you think austerity means? What do you think sharing prosperity means under an obligation and servitude? Go read the documents, folks. It's Agenda 2030. I read it to you. Go find the, if, even if, I understand, oh, that's another thing. I understand that there's some, uh, I now understand there's some files that are missing that I, even I thought after the purge. If you run across a, a document, I mean a blogcaster entry, and you don't get a file, please send me a, an email, and I'll see if I can upload a upload a copy for that, if that's what's happening. I, that happened to me here a few days ago, or I don't, some time back. I went to go get some stuff, and then there was no files there. Some were the old ones, and I know we had the purge, but some were the newer ones, and I was a little surprised. I don't know. What, it doesn't matter. I put some more files back up, uh, if you have that problem. But But here's the... Here, dystopian, how algorithms punish the poor. They're writing the algorithms, folks. I told you they will make stuff up. They will make you into what they want. That proprietary currency that Canada is, Kanukistan is thinking about is going to be attached to these types of things. All around the world, this digital dystopia that punishes the poor. Read this article to find out how the algorithms punish the poor. We already got indication in India how it works. All right? So this is not even new news in some regard, but now it's in the West. It's not some, your thought about some third world nation. This is the first world nations that are being driven down, okay? Just like the Agenda 2030 is pretending, pretending to do all around the world. Why? That's global, folks. It's not just happening in China. It's not just happening in Canada. It's not just happening in India or some little place somewhere. It's happening all around the world, from small town Illinois to the U.S. and Rockdale in England and Perth, Australia, and Dumka in northern Italy, and revolution is underway on how governments treat the poor. I want to remind you, you will all share prosperity, and that means you will share servitude. It's sharing debt your obligation to the state. This is what the digital dystopia written algorithms are doing, which the Chinese Ministry of Security is now tasked to do, make sense of the raw data. They make it up, folks. You, know, you wouldn't have a clue how they're, how they're going to make sense. What sense are they making if their whole objective is like climate change? What? Cook the books. You have a bunch of hockey sticks and Economic hockey sticks in Kanukistan. That's what you're going to see. China's going to have a bunch of bowls of rice. You're, you're, you're going to have a dip in your, in your economic system, and you're going to be at the bottom of that bowl uh, economically, digitally, by the algorithms. Digital dystopia. This is the algorithms producing your future. You punish the poor. You may think you're not poor. We're talking economics. We're talking about driving societies into being poor. We're talking about it's written. Agenda 2030 is saying you will be in austerity. In California, you will not have power, and you will have to pay for extra gas if you're given permission to travel in your car. You are going to be made poor. And they would think about money. You're going to be made poor in your rights to access to things. It is already all around the world. 
And I, I hear crickets. I go, I haven't said that for a little while this broadcast. I hear crickets on all this. Oh, no, no. We go to Mexico and they're full out heavy weapons war to protect one man. Uh, in the United States, we got crickets. Crickets. Innocent man. Innocent man. Digital dystopia. And I hear, and this is a, a little while back. I never get to this stuff. I'll bring it to it now. Twitter admits it used two factor phone numbers and emails for serving, uh, serving tech ads. What if that's the next caution to you that you've uh, stepped near, you stepped on a crack in the sidewalk and that moat broke your mama's back? That's the notice you get. Why? Because you bought into the fact of giving two factor authentication using your phone, no less, to Twitter and they went and used it for their own needs. Uh, folks, I don't give Twitter, I don't have a phone, okay? I don't use a phone. In fact, that's my problem with mines. They went to the stupidity, you have to have a phone, because they couldn't figure out any other way that would keep all these accounts from being uh, made fraudulently. So they're going to use your phone. That's a nice cover, mines.com. Why, well, I don't even hardly, I just post once a week, therefore, I don't even know what to do with that one. Got all these boosting points. I don't know what to do with it, because I'm not so sure about how this is all working because of this kind of thing. But you go to Twitter and you oh, I'm going to do two-factor authentication, which you actually should use, but they take advantage of what you need. And you give them the very device that they're being tracked and traced. And then they tie it to an email. And then they serve you ads. It could be just as much government notices. And if you don't do this, you're not going to be able to be doing any of that, huh? So this is just telegraphing. And to me, it doesn't matter that they're doing it. I don't give them a phone. I don't give them the, except that one email you have to give for Twitter. I don't tell them any other piece of information. And if that means I don't get something, then tough. I don't get something. That's the minds thing. I do not get the currency that they want to tie me into underneath rules that they really have no uh, no disclosure to me about. You can keep buying into all that. And yeah, I suppose I suffer. Like I said, I suppose by deciding not to go to Facebook when I first saw it, that's hurt this broadcast. I don't know. I don't know because the reason why I don't know is because not many will act anyway. At any rate, so Twitter admits. Okay, fine. Fine, they admit. Now what? That means these people, look at the governmental side. When this is all now integrated, more more clearly integrated, like they're telling you China's in security, no place to hide, folks. Think about how this is molding itself up to be what we've did, pre predicted. And those of you that are in the choir know this. But I don't see many people doing much to really distance yourself or even establish an alternative natural place to be, as I keep talking about the land law and all that. And we are up to our eyeballs with all the connections, so it's not so easy. And some of you are fine to you know, know that. But, but that's not an excuse either. Is if you talk to me any time, emails, you'll see how we step through the process to try and parse through what can be done and what can't be done to move yourself and reposition yourself. It's not that hard. Just take an awareness. So we got Twitter taking your information. You're giving it to them. Buying in. Oh, you got to have this, this security device. You don't get the security if you're not involved. Well, you're not going to get your benefits either if you don't give it up. That's where it ends up working. Google's new face recorder app transcribes in real time. And this is what caught me here, comma, even when offline. Google's new voice recorder app transcribes in real time, even when offline. Folks, I mean, that is so foreign to my mind. Every app used to be offline. Well, now the default is they're online. And this will work even offline. And this is the thing that terrifies me about the broadcast on YouTube. They transcribe everything I say. It's not that accurate sometimes, but it's there. In real time, transcribe, make a transcript for you all. Talk about confessing <laughs> confessing in a court of law. But there it is, and this is the point. Google's new face recorder app transcribes in real time. I've repeated the, the title, only the title, three times. Even when offline, you should be saying, why would it be recording online? Why wouldn't I just record and send a file? The technology to do this is fascinating as heck. They say it's AI. Okay, fine, that's just pattern recognition. Nothing special. Everyone makes a big special out of it. It's the same algorithms that'll make you poor, but that's okay. People think it's important. But it is fascinating technology, even when offline. My thought right there was, well, okay, when I get online, does it dump it all back up to Google? Everything I've said? I mean, it's one thing. Again, you buy a device, uh, 
but with a sexy name, Alexa. But you get that smart thermostat. I'm in my nest. Folks, I, why would it operate online? And yet people are going to download this thing. Well, I think the tool is cool. But I don't know that I just get it with Google being the supplier. Worse than Twitter, folks. Talk about adapt, taking raw data, putting an algorithm to it from the government. Like China is showing you and explaining they're doing. Just at the time Canuka stands picking up a digital currency. If you think that they're not all going to be tied together, you're you're delusional. Absolutely de delusional. Don't know what else to say. <laughs> it's clear as the writing on the screen of your iPhone or your Android. Even went offline. Fascinating. I get to use it offline. Isn't that neat now? I, they actually give me the choice to use this thing offline. Should terrify you at some level. I want to know then what does it do when I go online. This thing works even in airplane mode. I felt a little bit encouraged because that means maybe airplane mode is a little bit protective. But what happens as soon as you turn it off? Now, I know it's not completely, but as far as transmitting data to somewhere, a airplane mode is a security feature for another technology. Okay, so they've got to be careful in that, although they've been working that through and it may be a thing in the past relative to literally airplanes coming out of the sky. Oh, the airplanes that can be hacked anyway. That's probably the reason, okay? But offline, they get to give you get to use this transcription, but it goes online. They don't tell you in the story what's happening to those things it gathers offline. How about also without you really knowing about it? We've heard all the technology that says these cameras and or microphones can be designed so they never shut off. And so maybe put something else together. This new technology, these battery technologies that allows you to have more power, part of that is you're going to have the same utility for you they're building in capacity to the battery, ex expanded capacity to the battery to take up all this ongoing transmission that's going on so they don't interfere with you. And so it's transparent to you that they're already they're doing this stuff. You still feel like it's your phone. You're still charging it at the same time. You don't recognize it takes just a little bit longer to charge or that they're sucking power off all the time that, that they've added in that you're never getting. Again, these are devices, collections that you now hear China's working on the no place to hide. No place to hide whenever you say something. Almost like a, what gets smart comes to mind and having to be underneath the dome of silence. You better not have an iPhone in that dome of silence, huh? What do you think? Because it, it might be recording offline and transcribing a digital transcription, which is in a court of law evidence in any court. Think about this, folks, how they're doing this to you, and you do it. You think it's outside in the digital realm? No, Home Depot and Lowe's accused of scanning millions of customers' faces. There's no place to hide. I guess that's what got me on that on article. We, I've been reporting on all this stuff happening. We're telling you that the digital currencies are going to be official, official whatever. Now we see they're absolutely, what I told you, proprietary. You better find out who owns that, that ledger. That digital ledger is all it is. Just another transcription, another transcribed condition. You don't think they're going to put your transcriptions on the on a blockchain somewhere? 100% evidence. It's not tappable, especially if they if you don't own it. But you can be locked out of your account at any time. Okay, so we did. this is not new news. My, I understand that the Walmart does the same thing. Facial recognition. Do we hear anybody talking about this? Do we hear any uproar about stopping, big time uproar about stopping to participate with these companies? Oh, they'll give their plausible reason why, but the, but the reason is such a small amount of time when to capture, you know, criminals. But that's a small amount of uh, inter interaction with the store, isn't it? So then you suffer the shared prosperity, don't you? The shared obligation. You, you think obligation uh, means means debt. They take debt as cash, don't they? Their debt is credit, isn't it? They give you credit for that debt, don't they? So don't use your mind to think about this. Believe me, it's just not going to work for you. 
At any rate, what do I say more about it? These stores are getting facial recognition. These are private stores. So what's the one thing that you have? So probably the only thing. You can write a letter. You can tell the man, local manager. Or you can make a big, th big deal and just have everybody stop purchasing their stuff at these stores. You maybe go down. I understand there are jurisdictions where you can go and they can outlaw this, this capacity. I'm not sure how that worked. I never looked into it. But how how important is it? You know, in a way, how important is it for you to avoid having to go to the big heavy guns that they do in Mexico to protect one guy? How, how important is it to do other things that you don't have to go there in America? Since we find ourselves in this position, how much are you going to step up and do the paper filings, the requests, the Rec make the record that all these requests to be not a surveilled survivor, to not be presumed guilty, to n be able to do things without having to look over your shoulder at someone making up an algorithm. H how long are we going to go in a society that's supposed to be free, so-called, be free, at least in our minds, the slave that doesn't understand that he is? Huh? How, how long are we going to go not doing the simple stuff before we're going to finally get fed up, as I said a long time ago, be too stupid and ignorant, and just say we're going to go to guns because that seems to be the best way to handle this? when they've already told you they're going to set this up as a civil war between left and right. You're delusional. If you think it's going there, it's going there. Be if it becomes a plan for those that in the powers that be, uh, that are in the power. You know, I've heard this phrase, the powers that shouldn't be. Uh, what a nonsense statement. They're there because you let them. Uh, that means that they should be. That's nature. It's natural law. Anyway, getting over. Okay. So these stores are starting to bring facial facial recognition software used by third parties that will feed into a database. They get paid for, I told you, corporate big data tied into government big data, which is the economy of fascism I discussed behind the witcher just weeks ago, is your is the current thing going on. But it's going to be more of the future of the absolute here. And it's because you've been silent. And I don't think it's enough not just to not participate with the Home Depot or Lowe's. It, you need to write the letter and let them know. Give them a chance. I have nothing against these stores, but I, don't, I do know that because even naturally out going outward, they're going to look for more profits. Right? They're not, they don't care about anything. They don't care about you. They don't care about your rights. The NBA, the NBA did what, folks? You want to talk about corporations and what they do. We just want to play games. Yeah, they're going to play games with your lives, for, uh, for folks. <laughs> and as I... Vinny, they are fools, Hal. Thank you. Yes, I was going to say the word fools in the other word I was going to use there. So interesting how fast your eyes pick stuff up. Anyway, I just looked up at that one line. That's all I got to see, the, the one RLM chat. But uh, anyway, so Home Depot, Lowe's, you're going to write a letter and say stop this and actually persist. Don't just write the letter, but actually get a capitulation or find out that they're going to continue and then start some kind of an action where you, know, they, you just have people stop buying it. Just stop going into those stores. And it may be difficult. It may be inadvertently we're going to get mom and pops back up. You know, I don't know. I don't know where this goes. I don't know what all y'all think. Google collects face data now. Oh, it's, <laughs> we're back to digital. Oh, so they get you coming and going. There's no place to hide. In fact, that's what i got to remember to maybe title this broadcast, right? There, there, you don't under, I guess you underappreciate. What I've been saying, uh, even though you may know it's happening, this is not a joke. They intend complete control and surveillance. And we are realizing the society in the United States of America is willing to pay for it and will not protect themselves down to the last, the, the very first innocent man or woman. Right? We, we're seeing the evidence of our failure already. I'm here behind the woodshed to tell you Take cognizance of that, and are you going to be the one to continue that, or are you going to step up to st and just be one, be the one to stop that part around you? And I, that I can't decide for you, and I don't even know the subject matter. I, I, I just don't even know, because uh, you guys that, that do communicate with me periodically on the emails, you have all your different situations that you have, and they all have different ways of getting at them, but they all, you'll realize, and you do see this, we can get at them. It may be slightly different than you thought, but we can get at it. We may not be able to relieve an obligation you agreed to completely, but we can limit, we can minimize it, mitigate it. 
we can then set the record so that maybe you don't either don't do something in the future or it can't attach to you uh, in the future because you understand better. Google collects face data now. Here's a, what it means and how to opt out. If you didn't understand what this all means, someone's actually re written this thing for you call, uh, out of CNET, and I would say that CNET's got to be inside the system to tell you what it all means as the way they want to talk about it. They actually talk about Google Nest Max here, smart displays, front-facing camera. Why? It's smart, folks. Not too intelligent, but smart as heck, S-M-A-R-T. One of these days I'm going to figure out where that, what that, I mean, I already know what it means. I, sometimes I write it, I wrote those down, what smart means, and I forget to put it up for myself in order to tell you that those S-M-A-R-T is the process method they use against you. They incorporate in all this digital stuff. It was done before the digital thing, though, is the point. Okay? And I can't find it, right? I was looking real quick on one of the notepads I've got. I don't have it up. But anyway, one of, these, one of these days I'll remember uh, to let you know. It's not that in difficult. Uh, one is, I think, the first one, S is sustainable development. So then M is monitoring. Okay? So the SMART is telling you how they're going to go about doing this. And one is an acquisition of uh, data, I think. And this is what they're talking about in China, taking all this raw data and making sense of it, making their sense they want, not the sense that you think. Well, how can they do that? Because they're criminals, folks, and they're profit-driven, amoral parasites. And partly you allow it. You allow it when you hear Google has a face match program now on their system, and you go buy their products, that you integrate with anything they do, any of these companies. You walk into Lowe's. It's done. You're in a system somewhere, and they don't have to tell you that information. Oh, here's a, it's like, these are some old tabs now. I got through the main, uh, this crux I'm not into. Take action is what size. I, I, I focused on that real quick because it's what I tell you we have to do. Electronic Frontier Foundation. If you don't want to avoid what's happening in Mexico, eventually we can do stuff up front. We take action today. I say evolutionary action. We evolve through our own ignorance into action that keeps fluid in the moment as we start adjusting to our perception and orient ourselves to the real reality that's been set up for us and we continue and we prevail notwithstanding that abstraction. Today we stand at a crossroads as face recognition technology can now be interfaced with body-worn cameras in real time. Here's your cops back here, your military folks. Recognizing the impending threat to our fundamental rights, California Assembly Member Phil Ting introduced AB 1215. Interesting year, 1215, folks. Interesting. It will prohibit the use of face recognition and or other forms of biometric technology, such as the gate recognition and tattoo recognition on a camera worn and carried by police officers for three years. Now, interestingly, here's the now answering what I said before, can it happen? But look at the limitation. The government can only address the enforcement that they have in their corporation, for those of you who want to be triggered by that, or the body politic. That they can, these laws only apply to that structure, and so that it's effective not against private companies, which I'm not sure is available or not. I don't know. We'd have to look a little closer, but certainly it can be applied to employees of the of of the local government. And California, in trying to promoting this as a protection, where have you been to not support this stuff already? I've been talking about this stuff for years. I say myself, I only know relative to me. I'm certain there's other people talking about it. I can't be the only one, but even so, that makes it worse, doesn't it? We, where, are we, where are we to be the hornet's nest to stop this nonsense against us? And yes, there's a lot going on, so it's like overwhelming. But that doesn't mean we don't find, that's why I say, find one thing. Stop complaining about how much there is. Find one thing. Find just one thing. What's, what's so, so difficult about that? So you step up, you take action. I, I, I say evolutionary engagement is going to take more than what we thought were just writing letters and think they listen. All right? I've talked about all how, how you do with that, and, and it's do, dealable. I mean, you can do stuff. You, you can address all this stuff over just by, again, you got to get involved with it to see it. But it, it can be addressed, and it can be done peaceably, and it can be done with a big smile, or you can do it with, with joy in your heart. And it's kind of hard to be have joy in your heart when you're doing it as long as I have, but... At some point, when you see the little victories, it's you, those are the things I just kind of hold on to and fix. Even if it's just helping a, my colleague to do what he wanted to get done, 
in a subject matter I have no real expertise in whatsoever. We talked about that last, that last week at the end of the broadcast as well, Veterans Affairs. It's still addressable, all the same. And so, anyway, uh, just us addressing it. It's finding the evolutionary way through the, the alternative, if you will, through what the alternative destroyers are doing. And what your alternative is really just bringing up the actual lawful intention and purpose as it was supposed to be done, not the way it's been misapplied or misadministered or, or whatever we end up seeing in it. So look at Lockport's untouched $1.4 million high-tech system. The Lockport City School District began classes last week without uh, without its long-discussed Aegis, Aegis system, a well, military naval gun gunship here. We would discuss Aegis facial recognition technology in place. There's no place to hide, folks. If we understood about the schools and the prisons and the confirmation and the uh, all this other thing that goes on to make your child child of the village and an idiot of the village, they have already in place an Aegis facial, facial recognition system that could not be implemented. Why? Because there was enough pressure put on this school district to not allow that part that did the facial recognition technology. So if I had a question before in the broadcast where I said, I wonder if it could be done, at least in the school system, again, this is part government as well, pressure can be put on to stop this stuff. The question is, will you, will somebody step up and do this stuff? State Department of Education told the district to hold off on installing the system while more questions were answered about its use and scope. Ta-da! There's your administrative stuff. Purpose and intent, scope, those three things. I talked to you about those in mining law. Underneath the rules of the BLM, 3809, you go read the purpose and intent and the scope. Purpose and scope is really all what you need. The purpose of the law is for something, and the scope of its implementation is over something, is your answer. You go and you find out what they can and cannot do within their establishment, and you destroy them in two or three lines of discussion, folks. It's not that hard. They have questions. They have about its use and scope. You've got to find out what that use and scope was for. What is the necessity to do that? You can shut it down right there. I don't know of any necessity to do that. In particular, where, well, I don't see how you would collect it because you can't guarantee it's not moving on what? For profit. To profit off your little ones. And this, when you start doing this, then you'll see how to attack every other place, I suppose. And my mind just kind of triggers over to say, okay, that's just the model you set up to do every other place that has the problem. Right? So, I mean, this is not, I mean, my mind works in how to solve this stuff in real time. I just kind of, the answer seems to come clearly out uh, quickly. I just lay out a plan. And now we go through and get the, the, we go back through and we look at the definitives relative to the black and whites. And we look at maybe even find any, if you will, any arguments, case law, any responses that the system itself gave. And we find the weaknesses in those, the Achilles heels. We adjust what we were going to say. And then we apply, uh, persistently apply our remedy to the problem. If none of you are doing any of that, then then I don't know why we have a complaint, actually. Man spends three months in jail because a dog, a drug dog in a field test said his uh, honey was, uh, was methamphetamines. Why do we allow and continue to allow these uh, known fraudulent results uh, from these tests to be part of any kind of justice system enforcement or arrest procedures? Why do we continue to do this? Why? This man was innocent. He spent three months of his life in jail. That used to be a very large violation as far as just not money, but actually caused some change in the system. That was false arrest, which is one of the highest crimes that an official can actually do. None of you know that today. You just accept it as normal. You don't like it, but that doesn't mean that you know what to do about it. When you read the titles of these things, it drives me nuts a little bit. I don't really, really want to read more. You can read. But if you go read this stuff, you start realizing the ultra-faulty tests are even worse than canines. Why hasn't someone packaged those points together and destroyed this stuff that some man spends three months in jail? I don't know where the man is. I don't know what, if he took it onto his cause. But we hear about this, and we don't even become the hornet's nest to stop the harm against innocent men and women. And that could be each one of you folks. The, the evidence of what we need to do is right in front of us. Like I said, target-rich environment when you live in a military occupation. Facial recognition is part of the big data where you have no place to hide. You're not pushing back with to, to remove those eyes 
You aren't pushing back to remove the evidence that they fabricate to put you in the places they need to control you, which will then create a different type of database for you, won't you? And you'll have that list, that, that uh, list, the uh, arm long list of crimes that they can throw the book at you with, aren't they? All because of this stuff. You don't maybe connect all that, but this is how they build this evidence against you, and nobody's communicating with it. They'll fight with heavy weapons in Mexico over someone that may be a drug dealer of, uh, of, of notoriety and needs to be arrested against the government who hasn't necessarily made its right claim. And yet you go to the American, uh, United States of America who has all the right in the world to have a heavy weapon, and I don't hear a, I don't hear a bolt action. I don't hear a paper filed. I don't hear the lead coming from the edge of a pencil, folks. I really wish we would get to the edge of the pencil at this point. We would at least start to develop the responsibility and the action prior to any force that we need to do in defense of ourselves. We will, I would then have evidence that the society has a intelligent, moral, responsible reflection to the problems against them. Except what I see today is this triggering that goes on both sides of the equation, the left-handedness, right hand, whatever. It's nonsense. There's no evidence that we're going to be able to do this correctly either. And then we don't respond and we fight amongst each other. It's not. This is not something that the people are going to win at. Surveillance state, legal professional privilege jeopardized. This is kind of an interesting story because this is the Bar Association themselves, the agents of change being under focus. We hear that all the time with the collaborators after the after the military uh, occupation comes through. That you shoot all the all the collaborators, don't you? That might be a good thing in the point sense of the Bar Association, but that's not the reason why. If they don't need that, then they're not going to. You're not going to need any of the protections because there are none. But someone's actually discussing the fact that they're actually challenging these so-called legal professional privileges, which should be a privilege to everybody. It shouldn't be a privilege. It shouldn't be an encroachment. There shouldn't have been a discussion. But yet we've allowed all of that. How much we don't understand about the society we complain about has really always been astounding to me. And in partly because I didn't know it either, and I started to I'll start finding all these things. I started uncovering through my research these very big truths that I could come and tell you immediately. Here, go look over here. You think you're, what your civil rights are. You think that you're not in the military. You think the government doesn't have license. Uh, here, go Title 50, United States Code. It's all written for you, folks. The prison you live in, the type of prison, and you will not even defend yourself. You certainly won't defend one innocent man or woman. I mean, not like in Mexico. So what, what, what worth is it to uh, in you? I don't understand it. You're, you're, they're attacking even, even the privileged people. The collaborators are being attacked. Snoopers charter. Public loses privacy battle just as MI5 admits loss of public data. Well, is it loss of public data or is it just them covering up so that they don't have to explain things to you? And then you look at what China's doing to take the raw data and give you the output. Isn't that in control of the government too? So you're only going to get so much. It's predicted. You're only going to get what they need to hand you, which is going to be protective of them, not you. And so that any data being collected is a problem. China is telling you that the mass data, the raw data, is made sense by them. Canuka stands picking up the currency that's going to be using those systems in order to pit you uh, the thumb underneath you. And you think in America that's not in you. When every other story I read said this is a global problem. This in the, even in a, near in Illinois near you. But let's have the dignity and responsibility to defend ourselves, even to the last, the, big, the first innocent man or woman. Thank you, Grimner, for what you do at RealLibertyMedia.com. Over at juicy.tv, Jules, thank you very much for the simulcast sound minds over there and all your chatters I don't see, but thank you for being there. Everybody else that sends and shares and likes the, bro the broadcast, I appreciate it. Um, don't know why more of that doesn't happen, but that's not for me to know, I suppose. And uh, tell people, folks, you want to get more people active in the right way. I only think you can find it behind which end. I'll be with you next week. Tech diffs or nature really. Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
That's what opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 